Hey guys, welcome to the Lupus Profile. Today we're going to be talking about dialysis access. Are probably new to this community dialysis is a treatment option for people who have subpar to non-functioning kidney it helps us remove the toxins from the body that the kidneys normally do it also helps remove excess fluid but in order to have dialysis we have to have some way to access either the blood or if you're on peritoneal dialysis peritoneal dialysis catheter to, you know, access the peritoneum. So for the sake of this video, we're just going to be talking about hemodialysis, which is the type of dialysis that's done through the blood. There are essentially three types of access for a hemodialysis patient. First one is the dialysis catheter. And the hemodialysis catheter is probably the thing that, I mean, most people are gonna have that in an acute setting, like when they're first diagnosed and we need to start dialysis now. The nice thing about a dialysis catheter is that you don't have to worry about the needles. You just, you know, you just go in there, they, you know, remove the heparin, they'll make sure that it's working, hook you up to the machine, voila, you're done. Pons list for your dialysis catheter is actually greater than the pros. I've actually written it out for y'all. Pros, no needles. Con, or another pro is quick access. Like I said, you don't have to wait for like a dialysis catheter or a dialysis fistula or a graft to be put in and wait for it to heal and all of that. So those are the two pros that I could think of. I can't think of anything else after that. Mostly all cons, increased risk for infection. You can't go swimming or take sit down baths when you have a dialysis catheter. Also, it clots very easily. They have to put heparin in each lumen to make sure that it doesn't clot, but still it happens to the best of us. Also, the dressing changes are super painful. So usually you'll have like a clear plastic dressing over the site to kind of prevent it from getting infected. Depending on your facility, they may change it out once a week or once every, you know, with every treatment. When I had it, it was done every treatment. It was like torture trying to pull that tape off and then cleaning it and then putting a new dressing down. My skin was so sensitive and super raw. Just imagine getting waxed three times a week in the same spot. That's what it's like. So the second type of access that I wanna talk about is a dialysis graft. And this is the kind that I have. With a graft, um, they usually take some type of synthetic material or it could be, as it is in my situation, a cow vein. Ah. Really great diagram for y'all. Ha! So this here is a cow. I didn't know if you guys knew what cows looked like. This is a cow, okay? All cute and everything and having a great time in life. I'm assuming this cow lived a very full life. After she or he died, we took this cow vein, the big giant uh, jugular vein from the neck area, we took it out and put it into my arm, surgically. So they surgically attached it to a vein and an artery and then I voila got this massive like snake in my See, eye. I've got a ton of scars on it this is from all of my needle pokes over the years so we need a big old fat juicy vein that we can poke a big fat needle into so that way we can do our treatments and it's not going to be like 1500 hours you can see it is kind of unsightly you can wear longer sleep clothes um, like me, or just, you can just not care what other people think. 
So let's talk about the AV fistula. So the difference basically between an AV fistula and an AV graft is just the material, if you will. With an AV fistula, the surgeon can go in and take the person's artery and vein and connect them and kind of create this really large vessel. We need a big needle access because if we don't, then dialysis treatment, if, if we're doing it through a tiny little like IV, it could take like 1500 hours. Okay, this is a 15 gauge needle. Okay, so imagine trying to poke this in one of your small tiny little veins like this. It's not gonna work. All right, I'm gonna cut in and show you guys a video of me actually accessing my graft. So I have my 15 gauge needle. I've already cleaned my arm. I've inserted the needle and I don't have any numbing medication, but it only hurts a tiny bit. You always make sure that your access is working and one way to do that, you can feel it. It should make a whoosh, whoosh, Sound. I can actually like lay my arm or lay my head on it and I can like hear it and that's a good thing you want it to have that rushing river sound because that means it's working if you have a stethoscope if you want to be all extra you can obviously use a stethoscope and listen as well this is um, what it looks like up close when I put my fingers on it can you I don't know if you can tell it's pulsating. Another really cool fact is that because I have more blood flow in this arm, it tends to be warmer in temperature than this arm. So that's kind of cool in the winter months, you know, when I'm like freezing cold, I just pick up my arm and I'm like, oh, so nice. So yeah, that was just a little fun fact for y'all. But anyway, let me know if you guys have any more questions, if I've covered most of everything I could think of for the moment. Uh, yeah, so I will see y'all on the flip.